Latest estimates say that Israel's bombardment of Gaza has destroyed or severely damaged 60 to 70 percent of buildings and homes in northern Gaza and now many more in southern Gaza. And the terrifying toll of innocent death continues to rise with at least 10,000 children killed according to Euro Mediterranean Human Rights Monitor and many thousands more injured and maimed and forced to undergo operations without anaesthetics. I'm comforting too many constituents of Leicester East who've lost family members and loved ones under the rubble. I've received over 6,400 constituent correspondents calling for a ceasefire. The toll from bombs and missiles is appalling. But the desperate crisis of starvation and disease is set to be even worse. Yet today, the Israeli government has blamed the United Nations for not doing enough to deliver aid to the people of Gaza, claiming with unabashed arrogance the aid is there and the people need it. The UN has pointed out in response that aid at the border is held up by Israeli checks and UN staff are unable to get aid to the people or even get to the Rafah crossing because of the intensity of the hostilities. The UN has already lost more than 150 of its people to Israeli bombs and shells and is short of trucks to carry supplies because so many have been destroyed. It added that even if aid could travel freely, Israel's government are only allowing about a fifth per day of what Gaza needs, intensifying the suffering and starvation and the diseases that result. We saw last week the Israeli government plant Israel's flags in the middle of flattened residential districts, suggesting its aims in Gaza go further than simply destroying Hamas. We are hearing Israeli government ministers mockingly call this horror Nakba 2023, and even suggested dropping a nuclear bomb on Gaza. While Israeli government departments are discussing plans for pushing Gazans into a tent city into the Sinai Egyptian desert. Yet our government continues to describe this unrestrained assault and siege as Israel's right to defend itself, even in its response to this petition we are discussing today. Last week we saw the shameful spectacle of the UK being the only member of the UN Security Council to abstain on the Council's motion for a ceasefire in Gaza. The scale of bombardment of Gaza and loss of civilian life requires immediate action and I'll not be an accomplice. Collective punishment is a war crime. Forcible transfer is a war crime. Denying food, water and electricity are war crimes. The bombing of refugee camps, schools and hospitals are war crimes. Consequently, I have signed a petition along with other parliamentarians worldwide and civil society to the International Criminal Court to investigate and prosecute war crimes by Israel. The International Initiative Justice for Gaza calls on the International Criminal Court to investigate and prosecute the Israeli government for crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. The question would be, why is the government not even participating in the collective call for evidence issued by the International Criminal Court Prosecutor's Office? The UK can no longer sit on its hands while Gaza is starved, massacred and bombed if it wishes to count itself a civilised nation. The atrocities that happened in Israel on October the 7th and Israel's trauma cannot be a free pass to indiscriminately kill and bomb innocent civilians in Gaza. How many more must die? I am asking the government to advise in detail what concrete steps it is taking to bring about an urgent end to hostilities. What does it know about Israel's ultimate goals in Gaza? And in particular, what steps is it taking to pressure the Israeli government to stop bombing civilians and destroying vital civilian infrastructure? What is it doing to call for a permanent and lasting ceasefire? Just saying government is calling on Israel to minimize casualties simply will not wash when it is clear to all that there is no restraint and that many thousands more will die if things continue as they are.